this is our home, Miss Tisney. Miss Tisney means Big Rock and is in northern Canada located on the biggest freshwater lake in Quebec. Our ancestors made their way across this land in pursuit of game. This land of great rivers and immense lakes and narrow islands and bays teeming with fish. We settled here in the 1930s at the old Hudson's Bay Trading Post. Now our population is over 4,000. Our rich culture is protected and kept alive with the passing down of knowledge from elders to youth. In Miss Disney, we believe the land and every living thing should be respected. This is our home. I learned many from our elders and family about you know, how to read the weather, how to read the land, how to live on the land. So I've seen much change over the years. Slowly our earth is starting to heat up and uh, we're getting more and more issues. Something uh, is happening on the land too. The ice conditions, the snow conditions, uh, the weather conditions, is, and it's not the same what it used to be. So. The weather is very unpredictable. Like this year, we have a warm winter, a pretty warm winter, right? and I heard that the ice didn't really fully, fully uh, freeze. The ground was not solid frozen even in the month of uh, November, December, and January. We used to have ice before Halloween all the time. And now, now it generally isn't, and then if it does get cold enough to have ice, we have snow right away. There's insulation on the ice, so it doesn't get as thick as it used to. It's more dangerous now these days than it was before. We used to travel on the land, you know, way late into spring, walking on ice, and, and it was okay. But now it's different. We had uh, two well-known uh, trappers, and all their life they've been uh, living in their hunting ground and always living that hunting, fishing, trapping way of life. And we lost both of them by, uh, by accident. I've seen the ice walk on it one day and the next day the whole ice is uh, falling apart. Uh, the people too, if they go out on the lake, it's a bit more dangerous now because you may think it's frozen, but it's not totally frozen. So it could be like a pile of slush and you just go right down. Our people, will, when they walked the land, they were able to observe the land, the landscape, because they were walking on snowshoes. Now we use skidoos. Because of the speed the skidoos are going, you cannot observe the snow, the ice, the land, the landscape, everything. Everybody has to take extra caution when they go on the land. In the past, uh we were able to finish our season without worrying about the ice. Nowadays, we have to rely on ice monitoring because uh, you know, uh, the aircraft behind me is 8,000 pounds. We have to monitor what's going on so we can uh, have our own observation. The problem is, for one, we often say traditional knowledge, and when we use the word traditional knowledge, we, what we're doing is relegating it to the past. And I think we have enough power in the territory to make sure that Cree knowledge is put at the forefront. The scientific data that you would need to, to um, you know, to uh, complement with what our local people are, are aware of, what their knowledge is of, of the different changes. Uh, and, and really ask the, the people on the land, the elders and the hunters, what their observations is now. Everything is changing, even uh, the animals uh, are changing. Tante di tato e si smuga e spitaeit, cioè è un dovere su di come cosa. Come cosa vuoi di tanto che ha scomme? Non ci sono che ha toccato, ci sta ci di tanto che ha toccato. Cioè, gli ha un job ma un muso di disco in disco. December is sweet, ha. Ha un giorno ha avuto che ha caito. It's very unusual uh, for musa. Uh, like to, to, to breastfeed this little one in September. You, you never see that. Well, big guys are going to be takes and get in there. I got in touch with my dad. I guess I have a coyote. Okay, whiskey's the one touch to touch then. Just like my dad, I don't know. 
There's possible of possibility that that's why we're seeing like a rise in predators like lynx and fox. I've heard about the uh, mountain lions and even some, uh, oh, what are they called, uh, white-tailed deer that have been coming, getting closer to our area. Those cold, frigid conditions that we used to get up here are getting milder and they're getting like less um, severe for animals to be threatened by it. Like one thing I heard was with white-tailed deer that if they if they get too close to our caribou population, they have um, a brain worm that for them doesn't cause as much like neurological damage. But when it comes to the caribou, they don't have the same immunity to it, so they can be more easily affected by it. The spawning, when the fish spawn, so it must uh, affect because of that water temperature. It's usually like these days, it's about two weeks late. Because now when you go to set a net, you have two or three feet of ice to deal with. Whereas back 20 years ago, you had six, five, six feet of ice to deal with. So there's a big change there, but it's not the only people that really realize it are the people that work on the land all the time. And due to the climate like changing, it's usually spring is earlier and spring is, fall is later due to that. So it affects the, in the fishing area. All the guides have to adapt, try to adapt to following the, where the fish are. Like usually they would, in, when the fishing season starts, they would know where to, to start from, but now it's the fish are in a different location. So. There are certain areas where it's probably overfished. I was young too once. And that's what I used to do. Like I wanted to get more, more, more. But as I got older, I started to see the, that we need to uh, watch for the future generations. So that's what I am trying to pass on now. My other way of thinking. <laughs> we have to look also, you know, not just the possible negative impacts, but the possible opportunities that come with that. Using the land now maybe to do other kinds of harvesting. There are um, species of flora and fauna that are, that are coming into the territory and because the climate is getting warmer, we're able to grow different things. There's new species of ducks that come in the springtime. With ducks that we've never had before and I think it's because of the warming of the climate. Well, I do believe that the most healthy diet that we have is one that we've had um, since the beginning is we were always um, protein heavy, so lots of traditional meats and fish and uh, birds and and then we can complement that with our, you know, some more vegetable varieties. But we do have to learn how to become more self-sufficient in the territory and less reliant on outside sources, whether it be for food or you know other products, if we can provide them internally or within the region, um, we should be exploring those a lot more. I, I see it as a good, uh, a good opportunity for us to start our own gardens in our own backyard, because up here, you know, it's pretty uh, expensive to buy good food, healthy food. Well, I think that is something our community needs more of. It's we, what we don't really have is that, that uh, 
um, opportunity to grow our own our own vegetables and fruits and herbs and other plants and things like that that could you know benefit our, our you know us as community members to live um, a healthier lifestyle well I mean I think the urban agriculture plan is an opportunity for us you know as a, as a community to um, to to de determine what we would want to do what we need to see in our community you know whether it's uh, like I said, from a community garden to a greenhouse. They can operate and run all year round and would create like, a lot of jobs. When it gets so warm, I believe the trees are being affected. You can see a lot of trees dying off because of the dryness, because of the heat. Uh, and that's come about, I, I don't know, especially in clear cutting areas, you'll see a lot of that. And if like uh, issues of deforestation continue. I think that it's also affecting the traditional medicine in that sense that these things to them are going to seem less, uh, they're not going to see the same value that we do. <laughs> ウィシャシミチコツタウンジ、ウガニアがやしたちゃ、さし。あしが、いかのくそとおくてけ。向こうよ、しょうしがうい、こうしてとじがじ、せいともじがね、ちこともんど。ビオイノイトニョ。しょ
but maybe we need some environment engineers, if I can say that, you know, to assist, you know, the planning. I think we you know. could not maybe prevent, but uh, reduce the risk by uh, uh, making more efforts in coordinating our, our crew, more investigating before the actual thaw happens, uh, landscaping would help erosion control. And so we have insurance, and they cost an arm and a leg, but it's the way our system is set up. That's why uh, we don't search for our own insurance companies. We have a collective one with all the creation. If they determine that climate change or environmental impacts is a high priority in their strategic plan, that's how we would be mandated to, to carry out our actions. But at the moment right now, it's not a priority one in their, you know, in their uh, strategic plan at the moment. Well, there's several factors that uh, climate change has a, an impact on uh, the fire hazards. Uh, I think the community can uh, do a little more to be cautious uh, during the summer times, especially in uh, dry seasons, to prevent forest fires, because uh, it can have a significant impact uh, to our community if, uh, if a fire, forest fire uh, occurs. Uh, within the vicinity of uh, our community. You know, uh, some people tend to uh, leave their fires without putting them out, and uh, that poses a, a risk to uh, creating a forest fire. There's a lot to be done in terms of uh, fire prevention, providing uh, public education to the community, uh, targeting uh, specific audiences. Uh, there's definitely a need to uh, further review the, uh, the emergency response plan. Uh, it's not fully implemented yet. Uh, uh, we'll outline uh, the roles and responsibilities of uh, first responders and uh, the local emergency management community to have a better or more coordinated uh, emergency response. We're going to have to uh, develop a, a very good comprehensive uh, education campaign for all the communities. With younger people, yeah, we're the future. So I think you'd have to engage us now so we understand it deeply in the future and we start to, I guess, pay attention more to what's happening around us. For young people to get prepared, I think it's important that they they take every opportunity they can to learn about what's going on and to go on the land. It's a moving target, so they need to get involved, but also take the opportunity to participate in different activities, to be involved in testing and looking what the changes are from day to day for from their life. The hunting seasons are becoming shorter, and so it's more important for us to teach our children as much as we can in the short amount of time that we have on the land. Um, and also to teach them when we're off the land different ways to, you know, to take care of the earth. I think discussion is good, but I think when someone's just kind of feeding you knowledge, just kind of like as a, like a thing, they just keep talking and spitting facts out, but none of it's like, I guess, coherent after a while because it kind of just gets boring. I think we need programs that not only like where we're, we're on papers and writing notes, I think we need um, time like to actually go out and see uh, for ourselves and to get like hands-on. Understanding the world in the grand scheme of things that we're not going to be here for a long time, so you may as well make it better at, while you're here. I think around here, a lot of youth like hunting, fishing, trapping, and they like to be out on the land because it's healing for some stress people. Stress reliever. Stress, yeah. Because I get to take my mind off the of stuff of what's going on like in the community. I could just focus on what's going on there and learn stuff as well. A more camp-based program where you're taking youth from the community, elders, adults, and you're putting them in like a camp, like on a trap line or whatever. And at the same time, you're teaching them about climate change with hands-on, but also they're practicing their Cree way of life and traditions. 
and also we're preserving our values and language as a people. Some people think you don't care, you know, like what's going to happen to the future, and um, <clears throat> but they do. Um, they've proved it when, you know, they've, they fought against, you know, uh, big bad uranium and all that has a lot to do with climate as well, you know. Um, and I think that once they start to get into things, they they just blow up, you know, like things, so good things happen. They're able to do whatever they set their mind to. Yeah, I think young people can be involved in designing the programs and stuff. A program that a youth develops and like coordinates and whatever, I think it would have more of an impact because the youth is doing it. Well, climate change affects everything, yeah. You know, tourism, even our livelihood, it changes, you know. The Cree way of life, our culture, it affects everything. The Cree uh, territory has not yet started to see the full impacts of climate change. It's something that's going to be coming and it's something we have to make sure that when we design projects, when we design communities, uh, whether it's in the community or outside on the territory, that we take into account you know, the worst possible scenarios. We, we have to learn from the traditional ways of our people. And one of them is really to, to love the land and to care for it. Even with all the changes, you now the changes that we see today, we have to be able to uh, make sure that we learn from the past and, and into the future. I mean, we have children, we have grandchildren that, that need to enjoy what we enjoy today. Each sector of activity in the community will have to deal with climate change. So the considerations related to climate change have to be brought in to their discussions at their level, but we have to make sure everybody has has input and the next step or next steps have to involve everyone. Everything is economic, everything is environmental, everything is social. You can't distinguish them. And too often we live and govern ourselves in silos. That's some that's something that has to stop. I know the intent is there but we have to make we have to start making the changes ourselves, you know, and not just me, but everybody in my house, everybody in the community takes the whole community to make the change. You know, for thousands of years, the Crees have adapted and are you know, experts at adapting and they will continue to adapt. So we really need to make a really big push for awareness and um, to try to figure out how is the Cree community going to be in 50 years?